don't you start by introducing yourself and telling us what you do for a living? Yeah, uh, I'm Romain Gaudron. I'm a French Swiss racing car driver. There's Grosjean. Turn one. Look at the yellow car. There's McLaughlin on the right. They may come together. Oh, oh McLaughlin holds the lead. Grosjean goes to the outside. There's no way he'll be able to hold them off. Is it possible? Looks like hell. No, it's not. It's both of them crashed. My last race in Florida was a bit of a shock. So, yes, I thought that today I was going to talk to you as a IndyCar race winner. Marcus Ericsson in the Husky Chocolate Honda is a winner again, but this time on the streets of St. Petersburg. My sport is, is beautiful and, and very painful at the same time. We just got really unlucky and we move on. Looking back on St. Pete, man, that Yay! was one of the all-time classic IndyCar races. It is total oh! chaos! We had a lead change with two laps to go. Oh, we gave that one away. Massive accidents, a red flag, two cars in the air. Big fire. Huge fire for Joseph Newgard. I don't know what that race didn't have. Now we head to Texas. McLaren and Andretti Autosport are definitely both confident that they've taken a big step forward. Texas Motor Speedway. This is the first oval of the season. And they don't race another oval before the Indianapolis 500. The speeds are just tremendous. And if you're on an oval, it can be much, much more dangerous. There's a big crash. Texas Motor Speedway, it's fast, so fast. It's just about flat out all the way down on the throttle, all the way around. Inside with the 26. I'm going to be honest, it's not my favorite race of the year. Anything can happen anytime. This is tight. This is where you get nervous, really nervous. What do I do? Be smart, bud. Be smart. A lot of drivers had a bad first race in St. Pete, and they're going to be looking to kickstart their season in Texas. I can't believe it. That's unbelievable. My name is Patricio Award, and everybody calls me Patrick because it's easier. <laughs> I am 23 years old, and um, I get to drive race cars for a living, which I think it's every man's dream, bro. I love coming to Monterey. This has been my home ever since I was born. It's where I get to spend time with my family. There's endless options of toys, anything you want to do. You really need to find the balance of, you know, dedicating time and, and energy into your job, but you also need time to recharge and just get your mind off of, of work. Hola, buen dia. Come to daddy. No, como que comida mexa hecho en México. I'm my fourth season with Arrow oh. McLaren, my fourth season in IndyCar. <laughs> There's always been this talk of the big three, which has always been Ganassi, Penske, Andretti. And um, I, we're not far, man. We're right there. We're right there. But there's so many factors outside of your control that will challenge you. You have the field, my friend. Pato Award's gonna try to hang on for this win. It's not gonna be easy. St. Petersburg was a roller coaster of emotions because I got screwed big time. Oh, oh nice problem. Is something wrong with him? And the lead now has gone to oh, Marcus oh, Erickson. Here. We had a bit of a issue with the engine, which makes you lose power for a couple seconds. Award furious. The engine set itself. But those couple seconds are very valuable when you're defending your lead. The sneaky Swede did it again. Yes! So we had to settle for second. 
Pato Award should have won the season opening race at St. Petersburg, but had a fluke in his engine. Chevrolet took ownership of it, but it, it doesn't change the frustration that Pato felt that day. He should have won the race. He absolutely should have won the race. But Scott McLaughlin and Roman Grosjean will tell you they should have won the race. And that's just how racing is. Vas a niar carreras este año? No. La 500 for sure. Bien que está buena sí. Y obvio la Indy 500. Nunca sí, eh? Sí, pero tienes que niar la Indy 500. Es insane, está insane. Está insane. I'm confident in the team that's behind me. I'm confident in the team that I get to work with in order to take it to the big guys, like the Penskis and the Ganassis. Gracias. And challenge them every single weekend. And that's what ultimately is going to take us to that first 500 win. Pato Award from Aero McLaren and Colton Herta from Andretti Autosport. I think those two drivers outside the Penske and Ganassi camps, certainly in 2023, have the best shots at playing into the championship picture. My name's Colton Herta, and I am a professional IndyCar driver. What do we have here? We're at my new house, just moved from uh, Los Angeles. Another eagle. Still don't have internet. I haven't had internet for a while. My cell phone doesn't work here, which has been great. I've been driving to Walmart to do emails. This is this is me right now. <laughs> it's uh, ske sketchy for sure. It doesn't doesn't look good. <laughs> me and my parents when I was a baby. Colin Herta is such a unique guy. He's a very different personality than a lot of the other drivers in the IndyCar paddock. He's just sort of loose, free, and just bad fast behind the wheel of a race car. Colton Herta is an IndyCar winner a week before he turns 19. The youngest to ever win an IndyCar. Colton Herta has done it. It's a day I'll never forget. I had Joseph Newgarden behind me. I was 18 years old at the time. Holy crap, man. I am worn out. That self-doubt of, of should I be here, it was, everything was cleared in that moment. Right, I knew that I belonged in IndyCar. I knew that I had the speed to win races. Last year wasn't really the season that he was hoping for. So I think the expectation on Colton is really high. 2022 for sure was a letdown as far as all of our standards. Colton finished 10th in the standings last year and got a huge contract extension in the off season. Many people think that Colton's the highest paid driver in IndyCar right now. And that's a little bit like, hmm, the 10th place guy in the standings is the highest paid guy. So I, I think that people are waiting to see Colton be consistent. It doesn't make a difference to hear what people think about me, good and bad. It doesn't change my drive or my focus or what I want to accomplish in my career. Who's going to win the 500 this year? I will win the 500 this year. I started racing in 1959 at age 19. The objective was always to get to the top. And what was the top was IndyCar racing. I love everything about IndyCar. I don't think there's another series, truly, that can give you as much satisfaction as IndyCar. My name is Mario Andretti. I'm a retired racing car driver. Well, the Andretti name means everything to IndyCar, but I think it goes beyond IndyCar. Andretti went around him like he was standing still. I'm not sure there's anyone with a pulse that doesn't know the Andretti name. And that starts with Mario, who's on the short list of all-time legends. Victory number 52, second on the all-time list. The Indy 500 is special, so special, because how many sporting events are over 100 years old? And here's the checkered flag for Mario Andretti, winner of the 1969 500-mile race. To win Indy 500, the best way I can describe it is uh, a 
huge weight is lifted off your shoulder. You know why? Because fair or not fair, your career is judged on winning the 500. Voila! <laughs> this is the very last uh, IndyCar that I drove. For me, an IndyCar, it ended in 1994. I didn't want to give up, but 54 years old already, so it was time. <laughs> I think the name Andretti is just synonymous with racing, with speed, with winning. But the last sort of 10 years for Andretti Autosport has been a little hit and miss. They've had fast race cars, they've won races, but being able to do it consistently over a 17 race schedule, that's been the weak spot for that team over the last decade. Team Andretti is really, to clear it up, it's my son's team. Michael, it's Michael's team. Roger Penske and Chip Ganassi, you know, stand right up there. And I think Michael is right up there with him. You're always trying to write in this set. We've worked on a lot of our weakness over the off season, and I think we've improved our team a lot. So we're ready to race. We'll race anybody right now. For a very long time, Andretti Autosport was considered to be in the top three, but they've not really matched it or lived up to it for several years now. So Andretti's problem is how do we put together a full weekend? I have Ramon Grosjean. He showed at St. Pete that he could have won that race. Race one of the season is like, wow, we did not expect that. The season is long, there's going to be some good races, there's going to be some bad ones, but I think the key is to make sure that the bad ones are not too bad. They have Kyle Kirkwood, who they just brought back in-house. The paddock thinks Kyle Kirkwood's real fast. What's cool is that we're quick, let's say later on tires. Yeah, that's positive, right? Yeah, yeah. So, for sure. Ready to go pound some laps? And then Colton Herta. He's the youngest driver on the lineup and is the most veteran Andretti driver. It's cool to be able to drive for Andretti Autosport just because of the history behind it. My eyes are a little different than to everybody else's eyes because I grew up with them, right? My dad drove for Andretti Autosport. I've been around Michael and Mario since I was one, two years old. I used to have a mohawk. And I, I think uh, Mario called me this because you can never make remember my name, but he used to call me Spikey. Uh, <laughs> my parents tell me right from about four years old, I was asking for a go-kart. They didn't let me get in one until about five and a half. And that's when I got my first go-kart was, was that same year. And ever since it's just been my life. My dream was always to become a professional racing driver and specifically an IndyCar driver. So if I didn't make it, it would just be the worst thing in the world. Why somebody, like, bro? Welcome to Mexico. <laughs> Dario, I mean, you've driven a kart before. Yes, when I first started, like with the, with the powerful go-karts, my goodness. I never, never drove anything that fast. Really? Yes. Ah. <laughs> I, I got used to it. I got less afraid, and I just vroom, just went all the way. <laughs> That's kind of how it starts, honestly. My grandfather on my mom's side, he's the one at fault for me falling in love with race cars. He gave me a go-kart when I was three years old. And I loved it. The noise and the smells and the vibration. And I was like, oh, I can, I can do that. So I want to try and do this for a living. Autonomo Monterrey, this is where I grew up. My whole childhood was here, dirt bikes, go-karts. Anything that you can imagine with two or four wheels, I was on it. I remember my first race. I won. <laughs> and I won because the guy that was first his chain broke, so that's why I won. That excitement you had when you were six, do you still have that now? Every time I jump into the race car, I love it. It just turned into something a lot bigger than what I thought it could be. 
You know, I love where I'm at. I wouldn't change it for the world. But I actually wish that I could go back to those years because all you cared about was just jumping in the cart and just going as fast as you can. And you do it just for the pure love for motor racing. It's now a job, it's now a profession. Sometimes it takes away a little bit of that little boy inside of you that you remember being, that just wants to go out and go as fast as possible. Eh, dos, dos huevos completos y cinco claras, porfa. Y con tres, tres jamones, porfa. Let's go. <laughs> that ass. That ass. <laughs> Cloud. You remember Cloud? Yeah, Cloud. Cloud. The girls in school would call Pato Cloud because he had very nice and plump <laughs> butt. Booty. <laughs> Booty. <laughs> he liked to eat. So he was just like a chunkier Pato back then. He went to this like training camp and they tell him that he needs to lose weight if he wants to be like a good race car driver. So they said, do some push-ups <laughs> and do pull-ups. Oh no. I had never exercised muscles so I, ever. You know, I did uh, and then I couldn't go, I couldn't go down and back up. And I got mad and uh, as soon as I got home, I started, it was my first day of properly working out and, and I haven't stopped ever since. He was the most energetic, adorable, stubborn, hot-headed, passionate little boy. Who is this Mexican, the fastest duck? <laughs> Look at that little face. Pato is his nickname, which means duck, if you translate it just flat out. He was so good. He was very good, even as a young boy. For the first time in 12 years, a Mexican is a top three in IndyCar. Elba, his sister, and I have been there for every one of his wins. We're his lucky charms. In a few days, we'll have a race in Texas, and we'll all be there. He, that was his first win, like his first IndyCar win. So he's going to have a lot of support. We're all excited. Woo. Chapado. There's not another racing series in the world that's more competitive than IndyCar racing. So you can get one in three tenths. There's nothing that matches it. And if you would have told me that my first win was going to be at Texas Motor Speedway, I would have told you no way. Texas Motor Speedway, it's fast. Go, 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 go. Probably one of the most dangerous tracks on the calendar just because of how fast it is. When things go wrong, they go very wrong. But it's a badass track to drive. It's a badass track to race in. And Clear. it felt good winning my first IndyCar race there. The win at Texas is my biggest achievement in my professional career. Awesome. So I'm pumped to get back there and put ourselves in that position again to have that chance. Ready to pack up. I probably won't be back until the end of the season here in Mexico. Can't forget my underpanties. Are you gonna win Texas this year? I sure as hell going into it knowing that I can win, yeah. Texas Motor Speedway is a very important race because it's the first oval and they don't race another oval before the Indianapolis 500. They are going to a completely different style of racing. On a rower street track, you're accelerating, you're braking, the speed fluctuates. On the ovals, you are going usually 200 plus miles an hour the whole time. That means you're covering over a football field a second. The last 20 laps of that race, hang on, you should be standing up. A typical finish might involve th three cars running side by side, and the winning margin is one one hundredth of a second. This is time. This is when you get there. It's well proven that Team Penske and Chip Ganassi Racing are the top two teams in IndyCar. 
But I think Errol McLaren is saying, hang on, everybody, we're in the game, too. Texas, baby. They have invested a lot of money, a lot of resources. They're expanding, taking drivers, taking personnel from teams. They even hired Gavin Ward away from Team Penske because they really want to be in that conversation. They want to be considered with Penske and Ganassi. Looking from afar and seeing what McLaren are building was super exciting. And you could see the momentum that was starting to build. But also, you know what? I worked for a lot of racing teams. I always felt there was a better way of doing it. And this was kind of a chance to try and make that happen, build something. Do I think there's a better way to build a racing team than Penske? Absolutely. That's what we're trying to do. Now you had like the four and two combo and like they're playing together. Yeah, Gavin was a tough loss. He was a tremendous race engineer. He was a really good individual for, for team morale. You know, he understood the, the human side of the sport, no doubt. And now losing him to McLaren, I know that they have a strength that they gained from him. This year, McLaren's really come on strong. They've just expanded their IndyCar team from two cars to three. Driving the five car, they've got Pato Award. New to the team, Alexander Rossi. And Felix Rosenquist in the six car. He's been there for a few seasons now, but Felix's career at McLaren really hasn't lived up to expectations. So 2023 is going to be a really important year for Felix. Hey, how's it going? Thank you so much. Most racing drivers don't have a lot of job security. You're only as good as your last race or your last season. If you have a poor season, it doesn't matter who you are. Like, people are going to start looking for something else pretty quickly. You know, that pressure is always going to be with you. you. Just have to live in the now and just focus on that next time you're in the car. I just bedazzled a jacket in the back, a jean jacket. I was wearing it today. Isn't it good? <laughs> yeah, handmade. I am pretty impressed with myself on that one. <laughs> I hate ovals. It's not as exciting, like it's actually terrifying. Like it's more and more terrifying. <laughs> and now I like, I can barely watch it. So yeah, I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> You're a pretty big deal. So, yeah, I'm I heard you're a pretty big deal. <laughs> Shall we go have a wee and then go to the pits? Let's go. Yes, it's a busy weekend here in Texas as we're gearing up for qualifying. It's the second round of this 2023 season, and this is going to set the grid for us for tomorrow's 250 lapper around the one and a half mile Texas Motor Speedway. Who's gonna be the biggest and best cowboy of them all? It's so really stressful staying here. You don't like oval qualifying? I don't like it. It's stressful. Qualifying in Texas is different than qualifying in St. Pete. Here, each car goes on track one at a time, runs two laps, and the fastest average speed between those laps qualifies first. Here is an Andretti Autosport car, Colton Herder. Flat. Wide open. There it is. There we go, straight to the top. Back the whole way. Felix Rosenquist in the McLaren Chevrolet. And this is what we've been looking for. Someone to stick it right on the white line like Rosenquist is doing. Straight to the top. What's Second it worth? Flag. Good job, buddy. Straight bit. Oh, By a good oh. chunk, over a mile an hour. Yikes. Yikes. Dude, that's not so bad stuff. Well, I was, uh, I'd say pretty similar with that Justin who made. Really good sign for Errol McLaren to put that kind of speed down. Joseph Newgarden, will he celebrate in victory lane here at Texas Motor Speedway for a third time tomorrow? So the line second for Joseph Newgarden. 2.19.8, the two-lap average. Right Strong Thank run you. for Newgarden, but if you're Felix Rosenquist and that Arrow McLaren team, a little bit of a chest puff right now. Well, you did a great job in the car. It felt great. It just wasn't quick. <laughs> Go as soon as they release you. Let's go. Roman Grosjean in the DHL Honda. He's coming to the line. How does it work out? Grosjean, 219-1. Look at the consistency from the Andretti cars. Rosenquist is currently quicker. Felix Rosenquist is not far away from P1. Realistically, this is the best shot to take it away from him. This is the guy that Felix is going to be most nervous about. 
Sorry, man. You know what to do here. Put down a, a hot one. It's Pato Ward. Checkered flag. 2-19-6. That's not going to be enough to take the fight to his teammate, Felix Rosenquist. The giggles, the smiles, they've started already at Arrow McLaren. It is fourth career NTT P1 award for Felix Rosenquist. Yeah! A phenomenal start for this man and the entire McLaren organization, all three cars in the top five. How awesome is IndyCar? All of a sudden, Aaron McLaren right up there in the mix now. Two, three. Aaron McLaren just gave us a, a weapon today again. This is a whole different confidence level, I think, compared to last year. So, yeah, let's try to wrap it up tomorrow. A lot of drivers had a bad first race in St. Pete. And they're going to be looking to sort of kickstart their season in Texas. Winning race car right there. Five, the P.O. Pato wants redemption from St. Pete. It's time to go IndyCar racing in the Lone Star State. It's round two of the 2023 NTT IndyCar Series, and it is the first oval of the year. You gotta love Texas. This place is fast, it's turbulent, and it's unpredictable. It throws so many curveballs at the driver to deal with. It's stressful, and it mentally is so exhausting, but physically, it's tough in the cockpit. And we put ourselves in a great position here. We don't know what's going to happen out there, but whatever situation we find ourselves in, just try and make the most of it. Just proud of you guys, and uh, let's go have some fun. Oh, you're special. He's special. And I, I respect that, and you deserve that, Felix. Oh, he No, he's a very special man, OK? Yeah, yeah no, he's a big deal. He's the pole winner. <laughs> That's how it works. Please take me to the losers. Thank you. St. Pete Andretti was so good on Friday and Saturday, and, and then they fell apart on Sunday. Andretti's got to figure out how to finish a weekend. Hey, driver, you got me? Yeah, copy. Uh, have fun. Thanks. Bye, Mama. We love you. Be safe. Driver, start your engine. Are you so excited? Oh, I'm a little anxious. <laughs> oh! How was Felix? He was was he okay? Yeah, he was okay. He was, he was happy? He was happy and excited. It's been nearly three years since Felix Rosenquist has been in victory lane, but the 31-year-old Swede desperately wants to get back there today, and he's got a great starting spot to do it from. All right, bud. Just like any other race, let's have our wits about us. Have some fun. Up it up. Pace cars rolling. When you step in the car, that's where you can change something. That's where you show who you are and what you can do. You, you can always think about, what if, what if I do this? I have to win a race. In the end, all you can do is just perform. Your first stop, if you can, pit around lap 60. Oh, I don't really have a lot of words of wisdom for you, because well, you're pretty good here. So you've got a good car. You know what to do here. So we can go have ourselves a really good race today. Sounds good. Let's get it. Have a look at the most dominant team up the front, Arrow McLaren, with their cars in first, third, and fifth. That white and blue car is Joseph Newgarden. Joseph is the highest starting Team Penske driver in fourth position. Great one and a half mile oval here, classic IndyCar track, one of the highest banking that we have all year long, which leads high G forces. So it's going to be fast and furious for these drivers today. Dixon's joining on your outside there. High speeds, in excess of 220 miles per hour. Get ready. You have to be decisive. Be ready. You have to be brave. Ready. This is a very demanding race. Green, 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 green. green. In the PPG 375. Oh, Rosenquist with a monster jump. Look at all the cars dropping left sides in the grass. Man, there's a lot of action, a lot of moving around. Joseph Newgar's now taken second place away from Felix Rosenquist. Felix Rosenquist fell back from the pole. Pato Award now on the high line. This is the most frantic start. Joseph takes the point. We're happy to ride where we are right now. There should be no surprise that the two guys up front, Joseph Newgarden for Team Penske, Arrow McLaren's Pato Award. Joseph Newgarden also backing up to 
they're settled in, which is nice. Oh, someone turned to the wall. I think that's Sato. 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 I know. Such a shame for Takuma Sato. This is the same car he is going to be running in the Indy 500. For a second, they said Sato. I heard Pato, and like my heart. Then I saw the car, and I thought, no, that's that's not Pato. Ooh, the one guy, the one guy that has the similar name. Yellow, 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 back stretch. We are under yellow here at Texas Motor Speedway. The first yellow, the first caution. A yellow flag neutralizes the field. The speed gets reduced, you fall behind a safety car, and nobody can pass. Everybody has to stay in line. All right, watch for debris up here, buddy. He hit up top right around there and came down the track. Hit on his lap, hit on his lap. Kobe. It really can change the whole complexity of a race. This is going to open up the floodgates. You'll see almost everyone come down the pit road in the next few laps. I need to make another drink. When it's a yellow and everybody's safe and okay, I'm feeling like I get a break, like my heart gets a little break. So it's a yellow right now, so I'm a little, I'm breathing, catching up on my breath. Three, two, one. A little straight, put on the brakes. When the car pulls into pit lane, you get 18 and a half gallons of fuel, four new tires. All clear out. The driver's got to hit their marks perfectly. All six members of the crew that go over the wall have to do their jobs perfectly. And if everybody does that, you're in and out in about seven to seven and a half seconds. It really is a team effort. Our quarterback is our driver. Our wide receiver might be the left front guy or the lead strategist. It's all of them working together to create that win. You hear him blast it. You hear him jump on the gas. Green, green, green. Here we go. Racing again in Texas. Lead. Oh, lead change. The lead. Here the we go. He's caught Joseph Newgarden. Come here. Outside. The Newgarden does not want to relinquish that lead. Our ward has something more to say about it. Wow, that was a forceful demonstration from Pato Award. Joseph Newgarden, you're going to have to reckon with this young Mexican all day long. Hey, Pato, this is good for us at the moment, so just keep plugging along here. Uh, right now, fuel is not a concern as we speak. Fuel is not a concern right now. Let's not get caught up by a yellow man. The pride of Monterey, Mexico. Pato Ward back to the lead. They gave him that word on the radio. Fuel not a concern. Obviously, if there's a caution later, that could change the game. They've lapped up to ninth place. Felix Rosenquist, the pole sitter. Felix Rosenquist says that he doesn't believe in luck. It's all math. Well, he's going to need some major math to make it to victory lane here today. That's our teammate. Pato's on a heater coming outside. That's a behind him. Clear, clear. Pato Ward, he is starting to leave Newgarden almost by a second now. About to lap Colton Hurdup in sixth place. Crazy. It's crazy. Clear, all clear. And Pato is the leader. Pato is the leader. He looks comfortable, and he is flying. You're crushing it right now, man. Uh, our strategy right now, the more distance you put between New Guard is better for us. Folks, keep in mind, this yellow and red car is running in third place. Clear, clear. Paco Award has lapped him. Joseph Newgarden, seven seconds back. I haven't seen a performance like this in Texas ever. This is dominant. Clear, clear. You and Joseph Newgarden are the only cars on the lead lap. Copy on he is in a different stratosphere right now. Pato in the lead and looking for a second Texas win. We got a car in the walls. This is what happened last year. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think that's, uh, no, that's Rosenquist. Who is that? No, is that? Felix Rosenquist just a little too high and it's game over. That is the margin with which these drivers are working at 220 miles an hour. Drive us. That's far, guys. I know this uh, puts it a little bit backwards, but we're all good, dude. Uh, what a shame for the pole sitter. Two years in a row on the pole, but he's two years in a row that he's out of the race, too, for Felix Rosenquist. It was a yellow. Someone ran into the wall. So now everyone gets to save a little bit more fuel. We just saw Pato Award dominate, but that's when they told him to go, and you can drive flat out. It's going to be completely different now with only 72 laps left. Everyone's kind of playing a little cat and mouse game right now. 
Pato in the lead and maybe checking out here, looking for a second Texas win. We got a car in the walls. This is what happened last year. Oh, boy. I think that's wrong. Uh, no, that's Rosenquist. Oh, what a shame for the pole sitter. Two years in a row on the pole, but here's two years in a row that he's out of the race, too, for Felix Rosenquist. Unfortunate, uh, really a shame. Tough start of the year, but you, know, you can only move forward, right? We have to share on for Pato now and hope he gets it done. Here we go. Pato right now, we are going green. Pato awards, streaks away. Here comes Newgarden. Just about that. Second to first. He's on a mission. He wants that third win here in Texas and awards is not just yet. You want to see Brave Racing. Welcome to Texas Motor Speedway. It's going to be cat and mouse here. We got to do what we got to do here. The Andretti teammates, Herta tried to push through on Grosjean. The yellow and black and yellow and red cars right there, center of your screen. Too wide right there, Grosjean. How about Grosjean? Confluence is high from the Swiss-born Frenchman. He's loving life in Texas. Grosjean, still down there. Remember, he's kind of crazy sometimes. Here comes his teammate, Colton Herter, on the high side. Herter right behind you. At over 200 miles an hour, Colton Herter goes flashing by Joseph Newgarden to lead <laughs> this race for the first time. What is happening? <laughs> this is nuts. Rojan comes racing back. These guys are teammates, but you wouldn't think it by the way they're racing each other. It was fun there for a little bit. Yeah, it looked like it was fun. Pato, we're going to pit this lap. Pit this lap. Newgarden an award on pit lane. All right, Pato, nice and easy into our box. You'll have a clear in. We are only racing Newgarden in pit lane right now, so no need to push here. Nice and easy. Three, two, one. They're going to pit and try to make this to the end. Clear, all clear. All clear, all clear. Who is going to win this one is the big question to be answered. All right, Pato, do what you gotta do. Clear. And what you've done really well all day today and pass your way back to the front. Here comes Pato Award with a monster run. I'll get it, Jordan. Let's get it. Watch out for the Ninja. Clear. The man with the fast hands in IndyCar is on the move. Clear, clear. Pato Award to the front. I'll pass you, I'll pass you too while I'm at it. Why not? Newgarden is about to catch Pato Award. Newgarden's behind you. The two strongest cars all day run side by side, nose to nose, with seven to go at the line. This is just awesome. Inches between cars at 200 plus miles an hour. Bring it on. The Ward's got a great run. He might get to the front. Four to go. That's your bumper and your bears. They almost hit. They almost hit the front two. Still there. Still there. Still there, bud. Two to go. Both drivers flat out. Oh, Grosjean crashed. Grosjean. Roman Grosjean out for the second race in a row oh. in the closing phases. Oh, boy. Sorry, guys. Joseph Newgarden is leading as the yellow comes out with two to go. Yellow, yellow. Guys, that might be the day. That will be the day. Every race has a set distance. So if there is a yellow flag with only a few laps remaining and there's not enough time to have a restart, once you clock all those laps out, that's it. That's the end of the race. You are the leader, my man. You are the leader. Yeah, guys. All you. All you guys. Great job. Nobody ever wants to see a race end under yellow, but a win's a win. We're going to go to victory lane. You know the way. Come on, man. Yeah, kicking the balls, my friend. You had the car to win there. Uh, that's two races in a row. We could have won, which is a great start to the year. You are coming to the checkered flag. You'll come to the checkered flag. Good job, everyone. Oh. This is a replay of last year. Joseph Newgarden loves this place, and he's now a three-time winner. Grosjean's had a lot of wrong place, wrong time so far this year. 
Now, two races in a row having that kind of pace, but zero results to show for it, that can start building up and be frustrating and may affect future performances. That was hard, though, right? You did good. You did what you had to do. Yes. I think Colton can be relatively happy with his performance in Texas. We are in a position that, that, that we probably could have won one way or another, so he never complained. Uh, yeah, just good. Okay. See you guys. It was not easy. When the car needed to be there, you were there. Holy Oh, yeah. Coming in, putting that fuel in, he did a hell of a job. The car was fast, too. That bottom line. He's been knocking by me. Mm. Uh, they did a great line. job. Great job. Thank you. Good job, man. It was crazy. <laughs> they were not. Wow. I had a fast car. I don't know. I know. Really good. McLaren's confidence as a team is sky high right now. They were the story of qualifying in Texas, almost won the race, and that's with two of their cars out of contention. I think we made, we've made a statement. I know we didn't win the race, but we sure as hell showed everybody that, uh, that we were the class of the field uh, together with Joseph. He needs a hug. He needs, yeah, a... He needs a hug, poor baby. You guys did a marvelous job. Pato, están los comentaristas diciendo que they've never seen a performance like that in decades. Dominating. This is the first chance that we get to see a little bit of what we're going to have for Indy. I like what I see so far. So uh, our worst finishing position this year has been second. So that's, uh, I think that's a pretty, pretty damn good start to the year. And on to Long Beach. There's no doubt that the people at Penske are looking over at what McLaren's doing and really considering them a threat. Aaron McLaren is very close to Penske Ganassi. I don't think it's going to take much longer in order to punch through that wall. I'm like a dog with a bone. When I want something, I make sure that nobody works harder to get it than me. When we get that right opportunity, we're going to take advantage of it.